I'm Nicole and we're gonna learn how to make this macrame plant hanger. You can find a kit to make this at nicoleioma.com. Okay, let's do this. You are going to need an air plant hanger kit, something to put inside of it, an air plant, a potted plant. The size works really well. You'll need some scissors and some tape. Dowel rod, 11 pieces of rope. First is we'll take our dowel rod. You are going to take each piece of rope, line up the ends together so that you can find that midpoint with that loop over the dowel rod, pull the ends through that loop. So I'm gonna pull until it looks just like that. So again, have that loop over and then pull those ends through that loop. going to tape it down. You want it to be still, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. Make sure that your knots are all lined up nice and straight. First thing we're going to do is a square knot. We're going to take that first string, put it to the side, take the next four. The middle two are going to be our anchor thread, so those are just going to stay straight. And then I'm going to take the one on the right and I'm going to drape it over so that it makes what looks like a P. There's like the leg of the P and the loop of the P. And then I'm gonna take the string that's on the left and I'm going to put it over that tail of the P. And then it's gonna go back underneath my anchor threads and then out through the loop of the P. So I'll show you that again. I'm gonna make the P, those are going over those anchor threads. The anchor threads stay straight the whole time. And then I'm gonna take this one on the left and that's gonna go on top of the tail of the P back behind those anchor threads and then out through the loop of the P. And then it's really important here to have all the tension even. So I pulled both of these threads, they're even, hold my anchor threads and then I'm going to pull this up until I have the first half of my square knot. And then to get the other half of my square knot, I'm doing the same exact knot but in reverse. So now instead of having a P, I'm going to take the thread on the left, and now it looks like a four. So my four goes over those anchor threads, and then the thread on the right needs to go over that tail of the four, back behind those anchor threads, and then out through the loop of the four. Again, I'm gonna pull that tension out, hold those anchor threads straight, and then I got my square knot. And I'm gonna do this on the other side. I don't need this thread. Grab the next four, my two anchor threads in the middle. I'm going to make my P, take the thread to the left, put it over the tail of the P, back behind those anchor threads, out through the loop of the P. Hold that those anchor threads straight. And then doing the same thing in reverse, making a four. That goes over the tail of the four, underneath those anchor threads, and out through the loop of the four. So we're dividing the threads in half now. I have 11 on each side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two that are in the middle and actually cross them. This is now my new anchor thread and I am going to hold that straight the entire time. And then I'm going to tie these knots onto it. So these are coming up behind it. I'm gonna go up, it's gonna make this U and then it's gonna go through, it's over the anchor thread and then back through its own loop, holding that anchor thread tight the whole time that up and then I'm going to do two of these knots with each thread. So I have the U and now it's coming through its own loop. Keep this anchor thread tight, just move on to that next thread. You want to make sure that the anchor thread is at the angle that you want it to be. So we're making this diamond shape. Think about how angled you want that diamond shape to be. Okay, I have this first set done. Now I'm gonna move that half to the side, grab that last thread that I had just twisted over, and now this is becoming my new anchor thread for this side of the diamond. So again, it's the same thing, just a little bit reverse. So I'm making that U, and then coming back through the loop of the U. You 
you're going to want to make sure that this angle mirrors your other angle. We are now going to do a giant square knot right here in the middle. I'm going to take maybe four threads from each side and push those to the side. We're not going to use them. And then I'm going to use just the two threads on either side of this big group to make my square knot, which means all of these threads in the middle are now becoming the anchor. So if you remember the square knot from before, we had two anchor threads and then the two threads on the middle or on the outside. Now these are all of our anchors, and then this is going to actually make the square knot. So I want my square knot to sit right here in the middle, so I'm going to think about that as I pull it tight. I'm going to take my anchor threads, those are going to stay still. I'm going to take the thread to the right of my anchors, and I'm going to make that P, it looks a little less like a P, but you get the point. Make that P, then the thread on the left is going to go over the tail of the P, back behind all of those anchors and then out through that loop of the P. And now when I pull it tight, I'm not pulling it all the way to the top. I'm looking at where these threads stop and that's where I'm going to pull it. I'm not going to pull it too tight. I still want it to kind of keep the shape. And then I'm going to do the same thing in reverse. I'm going to make that four, put the rope over the tail of the four, back behind all of those anchors, make sure you get all of them, and then out through the loop of the four. And then I'm gonna go up and meet that other part of the knot. We have this elegant looking thicker square knot right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and divide these in half again because we need to finish the rest of this diamond shape. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna take the same anchor thread from before, from when we did all of these knots, but now we're going to angle it in this way because remember these knots will take the angle of how you're angling your anchor. So now all of these are going to get tied on there. So I'm going to start with the one that's closest to it, make that U, wrap over the anchor and then out through the loop of the U. And then don't forget to do two per rope. Make sure that when you pull these that they are, sit right next to each other. Sometimes between the square knot and the extra threads, it doesn't want to sit right next to itself. So make sure that you get it right on up there. And then this is a big clump. I just try to do them in the best order that I can. It's a little tricky because they're kind of sitting on top of each other, but this will straighten them all back out again. Now I'm finished with this half. Throw those to the side, we're going to do this side. So again, taking that anchor that's all the way on the left, pulling it over to the right, and then we're going to do that same thing. Grab the rope that's closest to that anchor knot, make a U, and then have it come over that anchor through the loop of the U that it created. And then we're doing two per rope. Now, to make sure that these two halves are connected, I'm going to do one more with that anchor knot with the other anchor thread. So I'm taking the anchor thread that I've been using already from the left, and it's going over that anchor thread from the right, and I'm just going to do two more knots to make sure that those are connected. And I have my diamond. Now I'm going to repeat these square knots from before, right here. So I'm going to take this rope from the side, Put it away, I don't need it. Grab these four threads over here. The middle two are gonna be my anchor. We aren't gonna to wanna to go all the way to the top. We're gonna to want to um, have it sit in the middle here like we did with this knot right here. So I have my two anchor threads. I'm gonna make that P, bring that thread to the left, go over the tail of the P, behind those anchors, out through the loop of the P, and then I'm not going to pull it all the way up. I want it to sit just above the bottom of this diamond if I had a line going across. So I'm going to have it right there. Make sure those anchor threads don't have any slack in them. And then finish the other half of that square knot. So make that four. Put 
that right rope over the tail of the four, back behind those anchor threads, and then out through the loop of the four. Pull it tight. Do the same thing over here. I don't need that thread. Grab the next four. Get those anchors. Make that P. Have the rope go over the tail of the P. Behind the anchors, out through the loop of the P. Make sure that tension is consistent as you pull it up, not too far. Finish that square knot, make that four. Go over the tail of the four, back behind those anchor threads, and then we will pull that tight. And now what we're going to do is we're going to continue this line, but go all the way to the edge. And we'll continue that there. So it'll kind of make this into an X shape. But that's going to hold the structure of the piece that will hold our actual plant. So I'm going to take this anchor again, continue at that same angle, and then I'm going to continue with these knots, two per rope. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to start with this thread right here because it looks like it's lined up pretty well with my previous line. Hold it at that same angle and then keep on going. We're almost there. Eventually this is going to come around and connect, but first I want to do some square knots in here to kind of create more of a basket for the air plant. If you want to skip this part, you totally can. Um, it's not completely necessary, but it does make it a little bit more structurally sound. So I'm just going to divide these in half again, and I'm gonna tie some square knots. So I have my two anchor threads. I think we got square knots down by now. I'm gonna take the next four, and the next four makes more square knots. Depending on your angle, you might be able to do the square knots right next to each other like I'm doing, or you might prefer to make them into a net. So you can take two strings from one square knot or from um, just next to the square knot you're working with, and then two strings from one that you've already been working with. Remember the middle two should always be the anchor. And you can kind of attach them that way. As long as you are making some square knots, attaching them to each other at some point, it really doesn't matter how many you put or where you put them. So now this part's a little bit trickier. I'm going to take the two from this side and the two from this side, pull them together, and then the two that are closest are now my anchor thread. I'm going to take my thread that's the furthest to the right, make that P, take my thread furthest to the left, go over the tail of the P, behind my anchors, and then out through the loop of the P, just like every other square knot we've done, but now when we pull it tight, we want to make sure that these two sides come right up next to each other and that they are even. So I'm going to pull probably this one down. If you need an extra set of hands for this, you could ask somebody in your household, grab some tape, but if you just kind of mess with it, you should be able to get it. Also, once you do the second half of that square knot, it should hopefully bring things into place. So now I'm going to make that four, take my right string, go over the tail of the four, behind the anchors, out through the loop of the four, and then pull that tight. So now I have this little space for the plant to go. I'm going to do one more square knot on either side of this. Now it's time to finish this off. What I want you to do is find the thread that has the longest tail. So that for me happens to be this one. For you it might be different and that's totally fine and you are going to take it and you are going to wrap it around all of these threads. Don't do it too tight. I would go probably three times, two or three times, depending on how you want it to look right here. Now what you are going to do is take your tape off, 
turn this around to the back and then you are going to feed this down through those coils you just made. Kind of push these around and then make them tighter as you kind of pull that tail back down behind. So I'm gonna keep twisting these around. This is kind of a tricky part and then keep pulling it tight back behind it. I like it to have this part on the back so you can't see it and just looks really clean, but if yours ends up on the front and you're okay with that, then that's totally fine too. But I kind of just keep pushing it around till it's on the back, pulling it a little bit tighter each time, pushing it up if I need to. wrapping it around more and more until I have it how I want it. Now the last thing is cutting off these threads. It's totally a personal choice how long you have them. You could even leave them this long if you want to. I like to have them kind of at a neat cutoff point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find where my shortest ones are and then I'm going to cut them that length. But if you have some that are too short, they'll just hide back in there. It really just depends on how you tie your knots in terms of like which rope is what length. So I'm going to grab some scissors and if you want to tape it down again, you can just to keep things real steady. I'm going to cut it right about here. When you're choosing where to cut it, it's always better to cut it too long than too short at first because you can always go back and trim, but you can never go back and add more. If you want to straighten it out, go ahead and do that. If it's a little imperfect, I would leave it because in my experience, the more perfect I try to make it, the shorter and shorter and shorter it gets until there's no coming back from that. I'll make sure that this is centered on the dowel rod for a really satisfying part. You can either leave it like this. This is three strand rope. And so what I really like to do with the fringe at the bottom is untwist it so that it has this really cool fringe kind of crimped feeling. Your little air plan in. And there you have it. Thanks so much. Let me know if you have any questions. Actually, last step, don't let your plan die. Or if you do, just get another one.